Okay, we're starting a question eight in the practice test for chapter eight, grade nine math links. Uh, question eight A says describe the steps you would use to solve the equation. Uh, 1.5 groups of x plus three is equal to a half a group of x minus one. Who has a suggestion for what we should do in A first? The first thing we should do in any question where we have distributed property on both sides is expand it. So when I expand this side, I'm going to get 1.5x. I'm going to get 1.5 times 3, which is a positive 4.5. So when I expand it, I get that on this side. And over here, when I expand it, I'm going to get a half of x and a negative half, because anything times 1 is itself. So that's step 1. What's step 2? If you have variables on both sides, pay ton. What would you do on both sides next? Generally speaking, we said it's easiest to get rid of it on the side that has the least amount. So I would do so by creating a zero pair. And I get 1x, or simply x, plus 4.5 is equal to negative 0 0.5. And finally, I would subtract the constant from both sides to get the x answer x equals negative 5. In question B, it says, how would the steps in part A be different from those you would use to solve 1.5x plus 3 equals 0 0.5? There is no difference, is there? Right? Just no distributive property. It's already expanded for you. So we wouldn't have to worry about it. Our next question says to solve and check. Um, what is our method for 9A? What do we do first to both sides? Ten. If we multiply both sides by the lowest common multiple the denominator share, in this case, 2 and 5, if I multiply any fraction by a multiple of its denominator, I will always get a whole number, won't I? So if I take this side, a plus 1 over 2, and multiply it by 10, and take this side, 2a minus 1 over 5, and multiply it by 10, I should end up with no fractions, especially when I cross-reduce. So instead of having 10 groups of a plus 1, I'm going to have 5 groups of a plus 1, which requires reverse distributive property. Give me 5a plus 5. And over here, I need to multiply both of those parts by 2. Give me 4a minus 2. Once we break it down to that, <clears throat> you could subtract 5a from both sides. It doesn't kill your equation, but it's easiest to subtract it from the side you have the least amount. Give me a plus 5 equals negative 2. Finalize your isolation by getting a equals negative 7. Now, you don't have to copy this next part down, but just to show you what would have happened if I did not cross-reduce. So I just said 10 over 1 multiplied by a plus 1 over 2. If I multiply my numerators and I multiply my denominators, I would get 10a plus 10 over 2. But because I can divide both terms in the numerator by 2, I would simplify it, say 5a plus 5. And that's a chapter 7 question, dividing a polynomial by a monomial. And as we can see, regardless of how you did it, if you cross-reduced or didn't, you still ended up with a simplified uh, binomial of 5a plus 5 etc, etc. Okay. In B, we have a much simpler question. We can do one of two things. And I want to just remind you of something in an easier question. If I said 2x plus 1 equals negative 4. This is a grade 8 version of a distributed property question. And we learned that you could solve it two ways. You could expand it. Or you could divide both sides by 2. So instead of having two groups of x plus 1, you could have one group of x plus 1 equals negative 2. Does everyone remember those two methods from last year? You could expand it using distributive property, right? Um, which would have been, let's bring these down for a second. Which would be 2x plus 2 equals negative 4. Or you could divide both sides by 2 
to get x plus 1 equals negative 2. Does everyone remember those times, those from last year? Okay. So given that that's how you could solve that simpler grade 8 question, how many of you divided both sides by 2.8 to start? How many of you expanded using distributive property? Well, let's do both. So this would be the much more complicated way. 2.8 times 3 is 8.4. So 8.4d minus 5.6 equals negative 12.32. Once we get that, add 5.6 to both sides. 8.4d equals, well, I don't know this one. So I'm going to go use my calculator. I'm going to say 12.32, and I'm going to make it negative. Combined with or added to 5.6 equals negative 6.72. And once I have that, I select the variable. I'm going to divide that number by the coefficient of 8.4. And I get d is equal to negative 0 0.8. Now, alternatively, instead of expanding using distributive property, what could I have done instead? Divided both sides by 2.8. Instead of having 2.8 groups of them, I'd have one group of this. I'd have to then take my calculator and say, well, what is 12.32 divided by 2.8? The answer is 4.4. Negative 4.4. Add 2 to both sides. 3D equals negative 2.2. 2.4, sorry. Divide by 3. D will be negative 0 0.8. Same answer. Just a different way to get the answer. How many use that method? Just Jacob? Okay, a couple of people. Okay. Okay. So continuing on with question 10. The interesting thing is, on this side, we have the least amount of variable. We have variable on both sides. And the general rule was, get rid of it on the side that you have the least amount. But we're going to disregard that rule on this question. Because if I was to get rid of this, I end up with zero. And it's not wrong to have zero on what's in fact. You can do it, no problem. But we're going to do it this way. We're going to add 12.5x to both sides. Getting rid of it there. Here will be a negative 1.4x equals 5.7. So when you combine these two terms, remember you're just combining the coefficients, and a negative 13.9 and a positive 12.5 will work out to be a negative 1.4. Once you have that, divide both sides by your coefficient. And x will equal, I don't know, 5.7 divided by 1.4. Huh. Is that right? So approximately equal to negative 4.1 because we're rounding our answers to the nearest tenth. Uh, in the next question, you have distributed property on both sides, so what should you probably do, Kennedy? For question B. That's right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to expand using distributed property. 1.6s plus 2.4 is equal to negative 3s plus 1.2. So when I expand using distributive property, that's what I get. I'm going to add 3s to both sides because I want to get rid of it on one side for sure. 4.6s plus 2.4 equals 1.2. I hate the variable s because it looks too much like a 5. Subtract 2.4, you get 4.6s equals negative 1.2. And divide both sides by 4.6, and s will equal 1.2 divided by 4.6 equals negative 
negative 0 0.3, it's the nearest tenth. Here's tip. Question 11 says precipitation is moisture that falls from the form of rain or snow. The relationship between the depth of rain R and the depth of snow R S, excuse me, the results from equal quantities of precipitation is R divided by S equals 0 0.1. If a storm uh, delivers 15.5 centimeters snow, what depth of rain would result? So start with your formula and substitute what you know. So that's going to become R over 15.5 equals 0 0.1. Once we have that, we're going to isolate for R by multiplying both sides by 15.5. And R will equal 1.55. So therefore, how much rain would fall? 1.55 centimeters of rain would fall. The equivalent would be 15.5 centimeters of snow. Now, your second question says, if a storm delivers 2.5 centimeters of rain, what depth? So we're going to write our formula again. But this time, when we substitute, I'm going to put for rain 2.7 over S equals 0 0.1. Now, we said when your variable is in the denominator, it actually turns into a two-step equation rather than one step. So we're going to first multiply both sides by S. And it gets my denominator, a non-variable, becomes 2.7 equals 0.1S. And your second step is simply divide both sides by 0 0.1. And S equals 27. So therefore... Uh, if 2.7 uh, millimeters or centimeters of rainfall, it would be equivalent to 27 centimeters of snow. Question 12 says, Nav is working part-time. She pays a monthly fee of $5.95 for her bank account, plus she pays 75 cents for any deposit or withdrawal. We'll call this for any, for each transaction. Right, we can actually change that to a transaction. One month, the total cost of her account was $12.70. How many deposits or withdrawals or how many transactions did she make? So X is going to represent, we have to define our variable. Since we don't know how many transactions, it's going to be number of transactions or number of withdrawals slash deposits. So if she's going to be charged 75 cents for each one of those, we're going to use 75 cents multiplied by the number of transactions or withdrawals. So it's going to be 0 0.75 multiplied by the number of transactions plus she's going to be charged 5.95 regardless of how many she has. And since this is the number of transactions or the cost of her transactions plus the cost of having the account equals her bill, $12.70. We can isolate the variable in this equation. The hard part was making this equation. The easy part is solving it. Subtract 595 from both sides. And you get 0.75x, or the number, the amount of for transactions is going to be, I think it was $6.670, 675. Divide both sides by the amount per transaction. And X will be equal to uh, 4 for $3, 8 for $6, 9. So therefore, she made 9 transactions. Can you imagine if today you were charged 75 cents? This is back in the day when they charged you for using your Interact. Today they don't charge you anything. You use it as often as you want. Question 13. So you start off with Dana, and what'd you put? First of all, what'd you make for your variable? Number of hours, okay. Or length of service, that's good. So how would you get Dana's? Yeah. 
Okay, multiplied by the number of hours. Yep. Good. So Dana will charge you $45 per hour or 45X plus $64.95 just for showing up. And Tom, Thomas, how what's Thomas is going to be? No, I've got to get Tom, Thomas. Get your mind, you got 40X plus $79.95. And the question is, when will this amount of money be equal to this amount of money? So we can set it up as an equation. 45X plus $64.95 is equal to 40x plus 79.95. We're going to subtract 40x on both sides. And 5x plus 64.95 will be equal to 79.95. Now that I have this equation, subtract my 64.95 from both sides. That means 5x equals 15. Divide by 5. And x will equal 3. So what does that x equal 3 mean? It means therefore, if both work 3 hours, they charge the same. What if it's less than 3 hours? Who do you want to hire for less than 3? Less than three? That's a tough question. Dane is better? Good. Everyone all right with that? Question 14. Uh, the square of a regular pentagon and have equal perimeter. The square and the pentagon have equal perimeters. So if I think about the perimeter, I can think of it as being this number plus this number plus this number plus this number, or four multiplied by the side length. That's the perimeter of this one here. Right, 4, 2D plus 3.1 would be the perimeter. This one would be 5, 1.4 is minus 2Ds. So since, since they have equal perimeters, I now have this algebraic equation where both perimeters are put on both sides, and I can isolate the variable to determine the length of D. This will be 8D plus 12.4 is equal to uh, 5 plus 2 is 7 minus 10d. So when I first expand it using distributive property, I have this equation. My next step is to get rid of the variable on one side by creating algebraic zero pairs. 18d plus 12.4 is equal to 7. I'm going to subtract 12.4 from both sides. 18d equals negative 5.4. Everyone okay with me so far? Divide both sides by the coefficient and you have your answer. 5.4 or negative 5.4. If you want to put the negative sign in, go ahead. Divide by 18 equals zero, negative 0 0.3. So d equals negative 0 0.3. Is that the answer to my question? No. Now I have to go back. I'm not even done yet. I then have to go, go all the way back to my question and say if D is negative 0 0.3, then 2 multiplied by negative 0 0.3 plus 3.1 would be its perimeter, or negative 0 0.6 plus 3.1, or positive 2.5. Is the perimeter. So the perimeter is 2.5 units. Do I have to do it for the next one? Or do I already know the next one's 2.5? This one should be, since the perimeters are equal, if I substitute negative 0 0.3 for D there, it should be the same 2.5. Am I wrong? 1.4 take away negative 0 0.6. I made a mistake somewhere, didn't I? Did I make a mistake? Yeah. 
Oh, you're right. 2.5, thank you, times 4. There we go. That's where my mistake was. The perimeter of that square is 10. Right, that makes sense. If I add these, keep flip change, I get 2. And since there is 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2, the perimeter of this shape would be 10 as well. Thank you, Kennedy.